Hello everyone, this is Leslie from The Whole Shebang. It's been months and months since I've done a face-to-face -face video. I have been doing all kinds of nothing really because of COVID. Um, I, had, I just did do my first Target video in I think three months, maybe more, uh, or the first time I'd been to Target in three months. So anyway, I wanted to talk today about something that has been going on with me for the last two and a half years, I guess, and it is almost to the day, actually. It is my knees. I am in my late 50s. I am a mother of five. I live outside the Philadelphia area, if you're not familiar with my channel, and I'm super active. I walk a lot. The example I always give is that if there is a staircase and if there is a escalator, I will take the staircase. I, um, I'm just super active. You know, I just make a point to do as much as I can. If I'm on the cell phone talking to my kids when they call me from college, I would get my coat on and walk up and down the 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 um, outside in the in the, in, the, in the street. Just I, I'm not someone who sits. I I'm pretty active. So anyway, about two three and a half years ago, I was working at this firm at downtown at, in Philadelphia and. I was working on, I wouldn't think it was the 44th floor, and the 48th floor was where the kitchen was. And I had to walk up four flights of steps. I mean, there was an internal elevator, but it took forever. So I would walk upstairs, the kitchen would walk upstairs to get ice, walk upstairs to get, you know, lunch, whatever. And I think that is what, I mean, plus years and years and years of, of wear and tear on my knees. I developed what is called a Baker's cyst, B-A-K-E-R, possibly, yes, cyst, C-Y-S-T. It is not really a true cyst. It was behind my right knee. Um, it is a sign of trouble in the knee joint. I got that in May. Very few percent of them, most of 90, I'm going to say 80%, 85% of them resolve on their own. Mine did not. Mine actually ruptured which is um, a unbelievably painful experience until, um, and that was, that was in May of 2017. Shortly thereafter, and then it ruptured and it was getting better, but I was still having trouble with my right knee. Shortly thereafter, I realized that I was having the same sensation I had had in my left knee, and I went to get an MRI. You know, of course, there's always like a process, and that is part of the problem. You feel something, you think there's a problem, you call your doctor, he schedules you to go see an orthopedic surgeon. The orthopedic surgeon says, yeah, I think this might be another Baker cyst. I'm gonna, t let's schedule you for an MRI and the next thing you know, I'm gonna fix this. The next time, I hope I fix this. The next thing you know, it's three, four, I just went back down. Three, four weeks down the path and you, I'm gonna try to fix it again. And you are still have not been seen by anyone really, and you don't have an MRI. You need an MRI to get a diagnosis to see what's going on. And during that period of time, my left Baker cyst ruptured. That was excruciatingly painful. That one, I could not put any pressure on my left foot. Thank God, my husband, of course, was out of town. He was in Williamsburg with our son on his class trip. Um eighth grade class trip. I had stayed here to be with the other children. I had to be rescued because I was actually on the street. My son had to come pick me up. He had to carry me into the house. I had to lay over there on that couch overnight. He had to take me to the bathroom. It was unbelievable. It did resolve within three, four days. I could start to put a little bit of pressure. I had gotten a set of crutches, which I'm really bad with crutches. Anyway, that was May of 2017. After those two events, I started seeing a series of doctors. Um, and basically, in May of 2017, I was told I was not a surgical candidate, which meant that I was not someone who would be, um, could, could not, I was not ready for surgery for my knees at that point because I still, I guess there's different criteria. I did not meet the criteria. And one of them was I still had cartilage. And again, it's very frustrating. Uh, you're seeing this doctor, you're having this done, and this doctor says, well, let's wait until they, uh, um, you know, I think he said five years until we can give you a stem cell transplant. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I can't walk up and down steps. Like this was, I was literally dragging my legs around. So 
eventually and finally I saw this one doctor in January 2000 I had synvisc which is another part of I had two synvisc ingest injections I had multiple cortisone up until then I had a synvisc ingest injection in both knees in December 2017 this is now we're going like seven months and most people get better with synvisc and that is really a wonderful thing that they have it's um synthetic cortisone uh, I'm, I'm sorry it's since synthetic cartilage to f gel to form in between your bones in your knee joints or any joint i guess i don't know if it's just for knees don't quote me on that and they it provides relief one of my neighbors had it done and said i i went back in and i never had to go back and get my knees done because i was so happy it did not work for me so i went back to see another this was now my fourth doctor i went back to in january that doctor said to me oh my gosh i do not do what you need done and you i had no rips or tears i had no cartilage she said but i am seeing this x-ray right now and you have no um no uh cartilage between you are bone on bone i was now bone on bone unfortunately because i that was january 22nd of 2018 unfortunately because of my december synvisc shot you needed to wait 90 days from a cortisone shot or any shot until you could have surgery because I would be a surgical risk. So from January until April 17, 2018, I was essentially just waiting for my surgery. And I will tell you one of the things, which I think people are trying to be very pleasant and nice until that day when I finally got my surgery date, which was April 17th people would say oh my gosh Leslie what's happening or what are you when are you you know it just it was such a hard time for me because everyone could see that I could not walk everyone was wondering why is she what is she doing like why isn't she taking care of this like it I'm sure they were thinking but for me I was just following the criteria that essentially the medical professions and the insurance companies have set up that it before you are eligible for a knee replacement surgery you have to um ha first have cortisone shots have an mri you have to have a synvisc you have to have a period of time elapsed you have to then be bone on bone with you know etc 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 all the box were checked i went in on april 17th i very foolishly in my opinion and i think it was a very big mistake and i would very much advise against it i did not have Either one was not good. I really think that they should not be allowed to do bilateral knee surgeries, replacements, which was I had them, bilateral meaning I had them both done on the same day. It was the most grueling experience. I had two extraordinarily injured legs, as I would describe it to people, and I will tell you now. It is like having someone shoot you in the kneecaps with a gun, I would imagine. I've never been shot. And you having to re recover from that. It was actually worse because my scars, which I will not show you right now, were like this long and I had staples put in, which they no longer do, I've just learned. But, you know, it was, it was quite, a, it was pretty crazy. They are cutting through your... They are cutting through your bone. They are replacing it. Um, I know people do it. I They don't do it for many candidates. I was told that they agreed to do it for me because I am young, youngish, to have a knee replacement. I am of a reasonable weight and they thought that I was in good shape and that I would be able to tolerate it. I, I'm very much of the opinion that even if you can tolerate it, it should not be allowed. So part of this entire video is to describe to you why I think that if you are contemplating bilateral knee surgery, do not do it. I do know that having gone through with my with myself, and I'm, I'm not done my process, by the way, and this will be in subsequent, um, subsequent videos. I do think that the thing that everyone says is that people will would do one knee 
and they won't go back and get the other knee. I am in very much, I do not believe that is a valid concern at all, and I will tell you why. If you are in pain, and you know that there's a way to get out of the pain, and if you um, cannot walk, and if you are in that much pain, as much pain as I was, you will do it. And it, yes, you will acknowledge that it's going to be a very difficult thing because I just went through it again. That's, I just had revision th surgery and I didn't want to go through the pain, but I needed to be able to get better and I'm getting ahead of myself. So I'm going to stop here. So I'm up to the point now in April, 2018, when I had my knee, my bilateral knee surgery. I'm going to stop this video now because I just really wanted this to be that period of time and then if you are interested in this and if you're not interested I get it but if you're someone who's interested in this please watch the next video because the next video is going to take you from April 2018 to hopefully the period we are right now which is April uh, 2020 and you will get a good idea what I've been doing in the last two and a half years with regard to my knees and how that surgery, which I blame largely on the fact that I had them both done on the same time, was not really um, effective. So this is Leslie. I am sorry if this is um, something you're not interested in. Hopefully I am reaching out to someone who is contemplating bilateral knee surgery. This is only my opinion. Please do not... Um, do not think this is medical advice. I am not a doctor. I'm just telling you from my personal experience as a patient, it is grueling. I remember sitting there as a mid-50 person getting my knees done and watching a woman who was in her early 80s maybe coming in and having the bilateral and I just I just thought they should not be allowed to do this to people. It To me, it is medically unethical and I have been telling my doctor that that you should not be allowed to do that. You should just not, you should not be allowed to have bilateral knee surgeries. You are effectively cutting a person's legs off and telling them, okay, now try to get better. And yeah, it's just too much. Because after the knee surgery, which is the really important part of it, after is the physical therapy, PT, and you're doing this PT in ungodly amounts of pain, and then you can develop problems which is the next part of this. So this is part one. Hopefully I'm gonna finish it with part two. This is Leslie. If you have had knee surgery and you know what this is like, and if you've had bilateral knee surgery and if you disagree with me, please let me know. I am just one opinion. Um, I do not think that, you know, you need to, let, you need to know your own body and you also know, need to know the damage and how bad your knees were. Mine, I think were pretty bad, but anyway. Thank you very much. I'm going, to sh I'm going to turn this off now, and thank you for watching. I appreciate my viewers, and I appreciate anyone who watches this. Thanks. Bye-bye.